Greetings and welcome to Intermediate Algebra, Rational Expressions and Rational Functions, Lesson 5.5, Equations with Rational Expressions. When working with equations with rational expressions, we're going to do a similar method as when we were solving um, these same problems and we had numeric fractions. And one of the methods that we used, we could eliminate fractions. That's exactly the method we're going to do for rational expressions. First, we need to find the LCD for all the denominators. Then we're going to multiply both sides of the equation by the LCD. LCD that will clear the um, fractional portion of it. And then we're going to solve it like a regular equation using addition property of equality and multiplication property of equality. So let's try first a very simple problem of x over 2 minus 3 equals 2 thirds. This is not a rational expression equation. This is a fraction equation. But it's the same method by eliminating fractions will we'll make this much, much easier to solve. So all of our denominators, and we can even see that there is a 1 underneath the 3, it's not going to affect much, but we do need to be aware that there is a denominator there. So the LCD of uh, 2, 1, and 3 will be 6. So let's multiply both sides of the equation by 6. All right. 6 times x is 6x all over 2 minus 6 times 3 is 18 all over 1 equals, well, 6 times 2 is 12 over 3. And it's at this point we can reduce. So by reducing our fractions, it will eliminate the fractions. So 2 goes into 2 once. And 2 goes into 6 3 times, leaving us with 3x minus 18 on the left. 3 goes into 3 once, 3 goes into 12 4 times, equals 4. From here, we're going to use addition property of equality and multiplication property of equality to solve. You've done this a whole bunch of times, so I'm going to quickly do this. Uh, add 18, add 18. That gives us 3x equals 22, and 3x equals 22. Let's divide by 3. Therefore, x equals 22 thirds. Now let's try an example with a rational expression. So a minus 4. Now we do need to be aware of, of one thing. Since our variable is in the denominator, we need to be very aware of when this problem fails. And this problem will fail when a minus 4 equals 0, because we don't want a 0 in the denominator. So therefore, when a equals 4, this problem will fail. We want to just kind of take note of that. And uh, when we are done solving for the problem, we do want to go back and look to see is the, new, is the mathematical uh, solution what we don't want A to be. So I'm just going to say we don't want A to be 4. It could be anything else, but we don't want it to be 4. Let's find our LCD of all the denominators. Our first denominator is A minus 4. And our other denominator is 8. And a minus 4 is one whole entity. We don't know if it shares anything in common with the 8. So because of that, we are going to say that the LCD is 8 times a minus 4. Now that we know the LCD, we're going to multiply both sides of the equation by 8 times a minus 4 and 8 times a minus 4. The good news here is 
Because it is the LCD, it's going to get rid of the fractions. So I'm going to go ahead and eliminate or reduce anything that I possibly can. On the left-hand side, I have an A minus 4 in the denominator. I have an A minus 4 in the numerator. That leaves A, let's see, that le leaves 8 times 6 on the left-hand side. And on the right-hand side, we can reduce the 8s, and that leaves 3 times a minus 4 on the right hand side. Alright, so let's go ahead and do this uh, math to solve our problem. I am going to uh, multiply on the left. 8 times 6 is 48. Distribute on the right. 3a minus 12. And from here, we're going to use uh, addition property of equality and multiplication property of equality to solve for A. So let's add 12. Add 12. That is 60 equals 3A. And let's go ahead and divide by 3. Divide by 3. Therefore, A equals 20. Now remember, as long as A was not 4, our answer is okay. All right, so our answer of A equals 20 is our solution. Let's take it up a notch and do a little bit more complex uh, example. X over X minus 2 plus 2 over 3 equals 2 times X minus 2. Again, we need to take stock in what x can't be because we have a variable down in the denominator. I don't care that there's a variable up on the numerator. numerator. The only problems we run into is when the denominator becomes zero. So we need to be aware when the denominator is zero. In other words, when x equals 2, we run into a problem. So we don't want x to be 2. It could be anything else but 2. Now let's find the LCD. So the LCD of all the denominators, well, I have an x minus 2, I have a 3, and I have another x minus 2. Again, an x minus 2 and a 3 have nothing in common. They're called um, primes to each other. And therefore, our LCD is going to be 3 times x minus 2. Now, when I multiply each side by 3 times x minus 2, it really is multiplying 3 x minus 2 to every term in our equation. So I'm going to go ahead and multiply each term by 3 times x minus 2. So 3 times x minus 2, 3 times x minus 2, and 3 times x minus 2. And by doing this, I can uh, reduce as I go versus having that step of, oh, well, put it on the outside, distribute, yada, yada, yada. It's just a little bit faster, at least in my opinion. All right, x minus 2 We'll cancel out the x minus 2 in the denominator, leaving us with 3x for the first term. For the second term, the 3s will cancel out, and that leaves us plus 2 times x minus 2. I'll do that distribution in just a moment. And then the x minus 2 will cancel out the x minus 2, leaving 6. 3 times 2 is 6. I do need to do this distribution while I am going to solve my problem. So let's go ahead and say 3x plus 2x minus 4 equals 6. Uh, combine like terms, I get 5x 
uh, minus 4 equals 6. Let's go ahead and bring the 4 over to the other side. 5x equals 10. Divide each side by 5. x equals 2. Now mathematically, we found that x equals 2. Now we need to go back and see that our restriction said, wait a minute, all numbers are valid except when x equals 2. And because we mathematically came up with x equals 2 for our solution, that is a bad solution for this problem. Mathematically, it is perfectly correct. For this context, it is not a valid solution. So there is actually no solution. The solution D and E does not exist. Here's another example. 5 over x squared minus 3x plus 2 minus 1 over x minus 2 equals 1 over 3x minus 1. Now, as it stands, I don't know if my denominators have anything in common. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to factor my first denominator and see if indeed it shares anything in common with the other two denominators. So x squared minus 3x plus 2 will factor into x minus 2 and x minus 1. And indeed, it does look like they share some information. So let's take a peek at, first of all, what our x can't be. What is our restriction? A restriction on x. That's when we don't want the denominator to be 0 and we want to figure out what values for x causes that to happen. Well, x minus 2, if x is 2, that will be 2 minus 2 and that's a 0. So definitely we have a restriction of if x, we don't want it to be 2. And then in the x minus 1, if x is 1, 1 minus 1 is also 0, so we don't want x to be z 1. In the second denominator, x minus 2, well, 2 minus 2 will cause it to be 0. We already took care of that restriction. We already noted it. And in the last denominator, 3 times x minus 1, well, again, if x is 1, 1 minus 1 is 0, and that would cause it to be 0. Well, x cannot be 1. We've already taken that under advisement as well. So we have all of our restrictions noted. Now we have to figure out our LCD. Our first denominator is x minus 2, x minus 1. Our second denominator has the x minus 2, and the third denominator has a 3 and an x minus 1 as factors. Well, we definitely need a 3 because the third one has the 3. We definitely need an x minus 2 because two of our fractions share that x minus 2, so we need it. And then likewise with x minus 1, two of our fractions have an x minus 1, so we need that x minus 1. So our LCD is 3 times x minus 2 times x minus 1. All right, now let's multiply every term by our LCD. So here's our LCD. All right, and I am going to write it out long way because this is a little lengthier problem than what we've been dealing with, and I want to make sure that all the steps show up. All right. 3 times x minus 2 times x minus 1 times our 5 all over our x minus 2 x minus 1 minus 
our LCD of 3, uh -oh, 3 times x minus 2, x minus 1, times our second term of 1 over x minus 2. And that all equals, well, again, I want my 3, x minus 2, x minus 1, times 1 over x minus 1. Okay, I am going to put some parentheses in here just for emphasis. And now I'm going to start reducing or canceling out uh, what's in the denominator and what's now in the new numerators. All right, and x minus 2 goes into x minus 2 once, and x minus 2 there, and x minus 1 there uh, in the numerator, and x minus 1 in the denominator. And the only thing left is 3 times 5, and that is a 15. Next term x minus 2 in the denominator, x minus 2 in the numerator. That leaves minus 3 times x minus 1. On our right-hand side, we have an x minus 1 in the denominator, x minus 1 in the numerator. Those will cancel out, leaving 3 times x minus 2 times 1, which is 3 times x minus 1. That is, should be a 2 right there. Right there. Okay. Now I need to distribute. I need to use uh, adding like terms. I need to use addition multiple. Uh, multi addition property of equality and multiplication property of equality. Okay, 15 minus 3x plus 3 equals 3x minus 6. Let's add like terms on the left-hand side. We get 18 minus 3x equals 3x minus 6. I'm going to go ahead and move my uh, variables over, say minus 3x, minus 3x. That leaves us with 18 minus 6x equals negative 6. Let's go ahead and subtract 18 from both sides. Negative 6x equals negative 24. Multiplication property of equality. Let's divide by negative 6, divide by negative 6, x equals 4. Now, before we box this and say, yes, indeed, our answer is x equals 4, we do need to go back up to our restrictions and just take note, as long as x did not equal 2 and did not equal 1, it will be a valid answer for this problem. It is indeed neither one of our restrictions, and therefore x equals 4. Let's take a, take a look at another example. 3 plus 1 over x equals 10 over x squared. Again, the first thing we need to kind of look at is to see what the restriction on x will be. And in this case, x, well, x cannot equal 0. We don't want it to equal 0, and that's pretty uh, evident. Okay, so x cannot equal 0. We need to find our LCD. Here are our denominators. Well, we have a 1 under the 3. We have an x, and we have an x squared. All right, we are looking for the number that all of these can go into. Well, 1 can definitely be in an x, and it can be in an x squared. Uh, an x squared does not live inside an x, but an x lives inside an x squared. And, of course, an x squared lives in an x squared, so our LCD must be 
x squared. Okay, now we're going to multiply each term by x squared. Right? I have enough room up here, so I'm just going to go ahead and add it to my problem and multiply every term by x squared. Okay, nothing to reduce for the first term because it's just a one underneath. So it's gonna be x squared times three, in other words, three x squared. Okay. Well, uh, that's a x to the first power, and if I bring it up on top, that's gonna to be a minus one, and an x squared minus one is an x, so the middle term is going to be plus one x, in other words, just x. The x squared, well, x squared goes into x squared once, and that leaves a 10. Okay. Now, I don't, I can't use addition multiple, um, addition property of equality or multiplication property of equality because I have a square on that x. So the only tools I know how to solve this is I'm going to move everything to the left-hand side, set it equal to zero, and use our zero factor property to solve the problem. Okay, so subtract 10 from both sides, and we're gonna get three x squared plus x minus 10 equals zero. Well, the good news is three is a prime number, and the only way to multiply to three is going to be three times one. So it's definitely a three x times an x will get us the three x squared. To get the negative 10, it could be 10 and one, but uh, three times 10 is 30. That's way too many for the middle number. And uh, three times if it was one, three times one is one, but then the middle term would be 10, and no matter how I look at it, that's a seven. So that can't be right. But uh, 10 can also be broken up into a five and a six, so, or a five and a, pardon me, a five and a two. So I'm gonna go with two here and a five there. That would give me three x times two is six x, and a 5x, and it is a positive one, so the two has to be positive. Now you can use lots of different methods on trying to figure out what number goes which, but the good news was that three is prime, so it kind of limited our options here. All right, now that we have our factors uh, set equal to zero, we're gonna solve using zero factor property. Let's break this apart. 3x minus 5 equals 0, and x plus 2 equals 0, and we'll solve these separately and see what we come up with. Let's add 5 to both sides. We get 3x equals 5. We'll divide each side by 3, and our first possible solution is x equals 5 thirds. In our second possible solution, we're gonna subtract two from both sides. X equals negative two. Okay, but we do have to see what was our restriction. Our restriction on X was zero. Neither one of these answers are zero, so both of these answers are valid answers. So our answers are five thirds, and negative two, so x can equal five thirds and it can also equal negative two. All right, take a moment and try this example on your own before watching the rest of this video segment. So you're gonna wanna find out what your restrictions are, what your LCD is, and for this problem, you probably want to factor both the, the denominators to see what do they have in common. So go ahead and pause the video at this point to see if you can work it out on your own. And then come back to the video and uh, see if you are correct. I'm going to go ahead and factor the both of the denominators. 
For the first denominator, I'm going to factor out a y, leaving y minus 5. And in the second uh, denominator, I'm going to factor y minus 5, y plus 5. And let's do that again. My pin was acting up a little bit. Okay. We definitely need... Let's figure out our uh, restrictions here. Definitely need to figure out our restrictions. Okay, well, we have a y. Well, that means y cannot be 0. That's for sure. And we have a y minus 5 and a y plus 5. Therefore, y cannot be plus or minus 5. Now let's figure out LCD. All right, in the first denominator, we have y and y minus 5. In the second denominator, we have y minus 5 and a y plus 5. Okay, we need everything that they have in common and everything that they don't, meaning we need the y, the y minus 5 that they have in common, and the y plus 5 that they don't have in common. So our LCD, there we go, make a better L there. Our LCD is y times y minus 5 times y plus 5. Okay, because that is such a long LCD, I'm going to go ahead and rewrite it uh, to both of my sides of my equation. So y times y minus 5, y plus 5. I have no idea why my pen's doing that today. All right, all times, well, that's y minus 4. Ooh, horrible color. y minus 4 all over uh, y times y minus 5. Okay, equals. Again, I'm going to write down my LCD, multiply by both sides, y, y minus 5, y plus 5, times the 2 all over uh, y minus 5, y plus 5. Okay, now whatever the numerator has, and the denominator has, it can cancel out. y and y, y minus 5 and y minus 5, that will leave, come on, pin, y plus 5 times y minus 4 equals, okay, on the right hand side, we have a y minus 5 in the denominator, y minus 5 in the numerator, y minus 5 in the numerator, y minus 5, or y plus 5, and y plus 5, leaving us 2 times y, which is 2y. Alrighty. Does not like my y's. Keeps wanting to put them down on the bottom. On the left-hand side, we do need to FOIL this, and then we're going to move our 2y over to the left, set it equal to 0, factor, and solve the problem. Okay, so that's going to be y squared. Well, that's a negative 4y, but a positive 5y, so that's plus y, and then a 5 times a negative 4 is negative 20 equals 2y. Let's move our 2y by subtracting 2y from both sides, giving us y squared minus y minus 20 equals 0. All right, I need to factor the left-hand side. That's going to be y minus 5 and y plus 4. All right, I'm going to go up here. 
y minus 5 equals 0 and y plus 4 equals 0. And I'm just going to solve these separately. Add 5 to both sides, y equals 5, and subtract 4 from both sides, y equals negative 4. Well, again, we have to look back at our original problem, look at our original restrictions, and see if either one of these failed our restriction test. And as it turns out, y cannot be positive 5. And because of that, it's not mathematically incorrect. Mathematically, it is perfect to have y equals 5. But for the context of this problem, it is not a valid solution. Think of it like this. When we were solving for sides of triangles and occasionally we'd get one answer that was positive and one answer was negative, mathematically those answers are perfect. For the context of the problem, we can't have a negative side of a triangle. Well, in this case, we had 5 as a restriction for this problem. Therefore, 5 is not a valid answer but the negative 4 is a valid answer. Let's change gears just slightly. And we're not looking for a numerical solution, but we are looking to solve for a particular variable. In this equation, we have two variables, x and y. And we want to solve this for y, meaning we want y on a side all by itself. We're going to kind of use this, the same technique as solving for um, a rational expression. So we're going to find the LCD, multiply by the LCD to both sides, and let's see where that takes us. Well, we have one denominator. The other denominator is a 1. So we do want to multiply both sides by y minus 2. So y minus 2, and we'll multiply y minus 2 on the left. Okay, parentheses there for emphasis. So the y minus 2 will cancel out on the right hand side giving us x times y minus 2 equals y minus 4. Okay, so far that helped us a little bit. At least the y is out of the denominator. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and distribute and see how that helps us. So this is going to be xy minus 2x equals y minus 4. Now remember what our goal is. Our goal is to get y all on a side all by itself. Right now I have some y's on the left and some y's on the right. So I'm going to get all of the y's on the left. So let's subtract y from both sides. That gives us xy minus y minus 2x equals negative 4. Now, y looks a little weird, so let me rewrite it. Okay, now I do have the y's on one side, but I have this uh, negative 2x floating around, so I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that by moving it over to the right hand side, so plus 2x plus 2x, giving me xy minus y equals 2x minus 4. Now that I have all my y's on one side, and I have everything that possibly could be on the right hand side right now on the right hand side, uh, I want to see what I can do here. And it looks like the first and second term of the left-hand side has a y, so I'm going to factor that out. I get y times x minus 1 equals 2x minus 4. And we are one step away from being done with this problem. The x minus 1 is just a number. That's all it is. It's just a number. And because it's just a number, I can, multi I can divide both sides by x minus 1. And I get 
y equals 2x minus 4 all over x minus 1. Okay, now I am going to analyze this problem just slightly because if I factor the numerator, I would get 2x minus 2 all over x minus 1. And um, either one of these answers is the correct answer. I just wanted to make sure that there was nothing that I could reduce. If there was something I could reduce, I would need to do that. But it looks like nothing in the numerator is shared by the denominator. Therefore, either y equals 2x minus 4 all over x minus 1, or y can equal 2 times x minus 2 all over x minus 1. Okay, let's try a similar problem, that, but this time let's solve for x. It's not as simple as just flipping everything upside down. This is not x equals b minus a, or b plus a. It's not as simple as that. But like our other problem, let's multiply both sides by the LCD. So our LCD is going to be a times b times x, because they have nothing in common that we're aware of. Therefore, our LCD is going to be a, b, x. And why a, b, x? Because that's alphabetical order and um, it makes sense to do a, b, x, but it doesn't matter. It could be b, x, a, or x, a, b, or whatever you want it. As long as you have all three values in there, you should be good. All right, let's multiply each term by a, b, x, a, b, x, a, b, x. And this time I'm going to write it out before I start canceling it because it can get a little messy. So ABX times 1 is ABX all over X. And then ABX times 1 is ABX all over B. And the third term ABX all over A. Okay, now I'm going to start reducing. Well, x goes into x once, x goes into x once, that leaves ab. b goes into b once, b goes into b once, therefore that leaves ax. And a goes into a once, and a goes into a once, leaving bx. So ab equals ax plus bx. Very similar to our last problem, we're going to factor bx, and then we'll use our multiplication property of equality to solve for x. All right, a, b equals a plus b times x. Let's divide by a plus b, divide by a plus b, and that will give us those dropouts. Wrong color, there we go. A, B, all over A plus B, and that's what X equals. We're not worried about restrictions right now. We're not solving for a numerical amount, uh, so we're not worried about what A, B, and X are numerically. We're just solving uh, the formula for the particular variable. Okay, let's try a similar problem, that, but this time let's solve for x. It's not as simple as just flipping everything upside down. This is not x equals b minus a, or b plus a. It's not as simple as that. But like our other problem, let's multiply both sides by the LCD. So our LCD is going to be a times b times x they have nothing in common that we're aware of. Therefore, our LCD 
is going to be a, b, x. And why a, b, x? Because that's alphabetical order and um, it makes sense to do a, b, x, but it doesn't matter. It could be b, x, a, or x, a, b, or whatever you want it. As long as you have all three values in there, you should be good. All right, let's multiply each term by a, b, x, a, b, x, a, b, x. And this time I'm going to write it out before I start canceling it because it can get a little messy. So ABX times 1 is ABX all over X. And then ABX times 1 is ABX all over B. And the third term ABX all over A. Okay, now I'm going to start reducing. Well, x goes into x once, x goes into x once, that leaves ab. b goes into b once, b goes into b once, therefore that leaves ax. And a goes into a once, and a goes into a once, leaving bx. So ab equals ax plus bx. Very similar to our last problem, we're going to factor bx and then we'll use our multiplication property of equality to solve for x. All right, a, b equals a plus b times x. Let's divide by a plus b, divide by a plus b, and that will give us those dropouts. Wrong color, there we go. A, B, all over A plus B, and that's what X equals. We're not worried about restrictions right now. We're not solving for a numerical amount, uh, so we're not worried about what A, B, and X are numerically. We're just solving uh, the formula for the particular variable. Okay, that is it for this lecture. Until next time, be seeing you.